Hello and welcome. This week we will be going over lessons 9 through 12. So go grab your manuals. We'll get started in just a minute. First, I want to know how'd your week go? Did you, how did your children do with partitioning? How did the game go? Go to the dump. Did you guys enjoy it? That was a family favorite of ours. Actually, I find that kids still like to play it even after they know all their facts. It's just a fun game. I'm going to go over the material. So I'm going to switch to the PowerPoint. Here are the materials you're going to need. You'll need a calendar that shows the whole month, your abacus, the worksheets, the place value cards. I'll talk more about those in a minute. That's a new material for this week. The math card game book, the yellow is a sun book, and the math balance. There are some other items that are needed from around the house. We'll talk about that also. One of the items on the PowerPoint were place value cards. These are your place value cards. Now I have them in a place value card holder. You don't need to have the holder. That's just a little extra, something that you could get, but it's not necessary. I just like how it's easy to keep them contained. But your place value cards are nice, firm plastic. Shows the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, and the, and the ones. Some of you who got the super set, these are items you'll need to print out on our website. Your child will be doing some worksheets out of their worksheet book. But what I want to show you is the math journal, because in lesson nine, it calls for the math journal. And I used to say, oh, it's at the back of the book. But look, it's not really at the back of the book. It's close, but you're looking for, you're looking for a page that looks like this. It looks like a big graph. And you'll see in lesson nine how the student is to write in this journal. Basically, they're just going to put one number in each square. So it'd be like one, zero equals nine plus one. Just look on the second page in the teacher's manual. It gives you a great visual. Review lesson nine is writing addition equations. Look at the objectives. It's to review the symbols. These are symbols the student should be familiar with. They're going to understand some terms and then they're going to practice writing addition equations. Because of the work they did last week with partitioning 10 and playing go to the dump, today's lesson should be pretty easy. And for the child who does need the extra practice, this lesson is great in helping the child review and practice writing their equations that make 10. On the second page, it talks about the difference between what an equation is and a number sentence. So when you say two plus two equals four, that is an equation although some people refer to it as a number sentence. But we want children to start recognizing that that's not a number sentence, it's an equation. As it says, engineers and scientists don't talk about number sentences, they talk about equations. Review lesson 10. How appropriate is it that we're gonna be working with tens on the abacus? So this lesson is gonna be interesting for those of you who have never done Right Start before because we use the math way of saying numbers. And that is what the child will start using. So here's an example. If I enter this amount on the abacus, it's gonna be familiar to you as 20, but it also has another name. How many tens do you see? That's right, you see two tens. And so that is the math way of saying the number, two tens. So if I do this, it's 23, but it's also known as 2103. We want the children to become comfortable with calling it by its math name. I know some parents are concerned about calling it the math way when their children know it by the normal way that they say it, and that's okay. But I really want to encourage you to have your children use the math way of saying the name. It is amazing on how it helps with place value, as you will find out. I too thought it was a little awkward saying the math way for saying numbers, but I want to show you something. So I've written these numbers on this board. 
Think about it. How do we say this number? We say it 4,000. How do we say this one? We say it as 400. How do we normally say this one? 40. Let's go back and do this the math way of saying the numbers. So if we say 4,000, 400, 410, it follows a pattern. And in following that pattern, it's helping the children to understand place value. If I say 4,000, 400, 410, and 4, it's really putting an emphasis on what comes after the number and helping you to establish the place value. So back to lesson 10. You're going to have your child enter numbers onto the abacus and then say the numbers using the math way of saying the numbers. For example, ah. this is 40, its math way is 410. This is 60, its math way is 610. And do you notice something with the beads? What happens after the fifth row? They swap colors. So now the yellow's in the front, and then it's followed by the blue. This way, you can even see in tens the quantity without needing to count. You'll also use the place value cards. So even like this, they'll see it as 60, but you're, they're going to be able to say 610. You really want to point to emphasize it, 610. Here we have 100, but it's also 10 tens. So it's 100, or it's also known as 10 tens. 400, but also 40 tens. Today's lesson also calls for a game. Depending on how quick you get your lessons done, you could play the game right after you do the lessons, or you may want to consider doing your lessons first and then later on at a different time of the day come in and play the game. Review lesson 11 is tens and ones. So you're going to work with your student with tens and ones and combining them. You'll be using the abacus, you're going to use your place value cards. So we have 610, we have 4. If we build this, we just built 6104. We could also show it on the abacus. So we have our six tens and four. So on the abacus, we're showing the quantity of 6104. Then we built it with our place value cards, which is the symbol that we use for 6104 for 64. Your child will be doing a worksheet. I want you to encourage them not just to rush through because if they see 60 plus 7 and they know it's 67, that's fine. But I'd really like you to encourage them to build it on the abacus, to see it on the abacus, and maybe even build it with their place value cards. Or maybe you have a child who doesn't want anything to do with the abacus because they know this. They don't need the abacus. That's fine. Let them answer the questions. But because this is a new way of thinking about numbers, I would pick out one of the problems, one of the equations, and I would ask them to show it to you on the abacus or even with the place value cards and explain it to you. Lesson 12, adding one. In our objectives, notice we're going to review yellow is the sun. We're going to add one to a number for anywhere from 1 to 99 using the AL abacus, and then they're going to explore using the math balance. The key word there, explore. One of the things you'll be doing is having your child enter onto the abacus a number. For example, let's say we're going to add 10-4. 10 and 4. We're going to add one more. So what is that? It's 15. Maybe your child knows if you have 10-4 and you're going to add one more, that it's 15. They don't necessarily need to use the abacus to do it, but you could ask them to verify it on the abacus. 
especially when it's a bigger number or maybe a little harder number, say like 96 and one more. Now for some kids, that's going to be really easy, but for other kids, it's going to be something they may have to think about. So the abacus is a great tool. Encourage them to use it. And lastly, the child gets to explore using the math balance. So I'll give an example. You're going to put two weights on one side. So I'm going to do a nine and one. Then you're going to give your student one weight and you're going to ask them to put it on the other side to make it equal. This is where they can explore. Maybe they know right away nine and one more is 10. Maybe they don't. This will give them practice and it's a fun way to practice. So let's say we have 18 and we're going to add one more to it. How are they going to find 19 on the other side? So it's going to have a little strategy. Are there other ways that they could have made 19 or a 10 9? Yes, there are. But we're just giving them two weights and they have to find the answer. If you have a child who enjoys the challenge, give them more than two weights to find the answer. And I noticed that my, my balance isn't totally balanced the way I like it. That's where I have to fiddle around with the white clips till it balances. Yeah, now it's balanced. One of the things about using the math balance that I like is that we're getting children a little bit more comfortable with algebraic thinking. Because in algebra, sometimes you have a letter that represents a number. And so you have to figure out what that answer is. Now we're not using letters here. However, they are having to think about it and process through it. So let's, let's just say, for example, we have a 10 and an eight on one side and a 10 and the not a nine on the other. What do I have to do to get it to balance? Without, I don't move any of the weights, I'm gonna add a weight. So that's our N. What number? And again, if they wanna explore, I love it because the balance is just an immediate answer. Now remember, we wanna be gentle because if not, all the weights will come tumbling off. So that's just an example of what I was talking about. It's not a specific thing that we're teaching per se in this lesson, but it is something that they're learning. We're done for the week. We made it through lessons nine through 12. I'll see you next week when we go over lessons 13 through 16. Until then,